All right, Sandra, we have you here. Next, we're going to be talking about Ali Krieger and Megan Rapinoe, both uh, retiring last season and the fall kind of of Seattle Reign and Gotham FC. I want to get your take before we have this conversation without you. Um, is that partly why these teams are struggling so much, the fact that these legends and these captains have left? You know, I don't, I don't know if it's if it's a simple and just sort of kind of fixating it on such iconic players, but I don't think we can ignore the fact that these were two players who have had such a legacy in women's pro soccer, obviously at the international as well, winning World Cups together. And there's something to be said that even if a Seattle Rainside maybe was used to long stretches of time not seeing Megan Rapinoe for international duty, and maybe they should be used to kind of adapting by losing someone like that, it really leaves a lot to be said about what goes missing from maybe the locker room or the things that happen off of the pitch. All those little small important moments that you find leadership in other ways that aren't just on the actual field. So I do think it maybe plays a small uh, sort of part in the bigger picture of things. But I think these are two sides coming into 2024 that had pretty respectable rosters when you take a look at the entirety from player one all the way through player 26, let's say. So I think it's it's significant to know that they're having a rocky start to their season, but they've got enough games under themselves and enough lessons here to kind of take a look in the mirror and say, who do we look to? Who's going to step up? Is it going to be me or someone else to kind of maybe make sure that they get the boat steered in the right direction again? Beautiful, Sandra. We're going to go ahead and ask Darian and Lisa those questions about who those players are that need to step up and how they need to do so. Um, thank you so much for your intake. Okay, so the finalists for last season's championship match were San Diego Rain, San Diego Rain, <laughs> Seattle Rain, <laughs> <That's your team. laughs> and um, Gotham FC. And that final match was headlined by the retirements of Megan Rapino and Ali Krieger. And this year, without that leadership on both of those sides, these teams seem to be struggling. Um, what is it like to, to cope? with that kind of leadership, right? Let's go ahead and start with Megan Rapinoe on Seattle Reign, Darian. Yeah, I had the honor of playing with Pino when I was at Reign, and for part of the season she was out after an injury with at the Olympics, I believe, or at the World Cup, I, I don't remember. All the years blend together, but when she came back, it felt like a completely different environment. She always advocated for things to be better on and off the pitch. She was such a leader. Uh, she's incredibly vocal. The way that she plays on the field is mesmerizing and I'd learned so much just watching her because she does all the simple things right or did all the simple things right. She played with confidence. She had this swagger about her that I think is so unmatched and so contagious when you're her teammate and you're able to witness it day in and day out. Having lost her last year where she's no longer on the pitch, she's retired now, this team, she was a huge part of the identity of this team. So now that they have to shift and they're not relying on Pino for set pieces for all of these key moments in games or penalties or, hey, we need a goal, let's get the ball to Pino, let's see what Pino mm -hmm. can make of this. They don't have that anymore. They also lost quite a few other players last year that were very identity-centric to what Seattle was doing in their play. Rose Lavelle was a huge one who led this team into the championship. Uh, so it's difficult for this team, but I, I like this. I, I have full trust in Laura Harvey because she, she realizes that. I'm sure she's known it for a really long time. They still have veterans like Jess Fishlock, Lauren Barnes on the team who are incredible leaders that know what it takes to still rebuild. This is just a team that's in a rebuild moment, and I think they're still going to be very effective. They just need to put the right pieces in at the right time for this team. Like Ziara King coming on and scoring yeah. a banger. Maybe she should have started that match. Ooh, I like that show. And f for Gotham with Allie Krieger, I think it was so evident last year how the team, the fans, the club in general rallied around her being her final season. Um, it, frankly, things that happened off the pitch in her personal life that the team wanted to be there for her. And when you have one person on a team that you are supporting and you're doing things for, you can look to your left and right and know, I want to work harder for this one person that is our leader. That was Allie Krieger. She embodied so much of what this Gotham team wanted to be identified as last year, playing with heart, being gritty in their play, going hard into tackles, doing a lot of the dirty work to win games, because that's the type of player Allie Krieger was. And she always did it with a smile on her face every single day. And that, to me, is what led Gotham all the way to lifting the championship trophy at the end of the season. The fact that they could rally around a player like this. Honestly, Juan Carlos Amaros knew he was leaving, losing Ali Krieger at the end of last year, and he wanted to pick up some other pieces, leadership-wise, that could take this team to the next level. I mean, you look at the offseason acquisitions for Gotham. 
Emily Sonnet, Rose Lavelle, um, Tierna Davidson in the back line, Crystal Dunn. He said, okay, we're losing a veteran, a leader. We're going to bring in all these other players that can lead and, and be a uh, pillars of this team and the identity and what we want to be moving forward. Well, that leads me exactly into that question, right? Because yes, they brought in these different players, but they're currently in eighth place. This is a reigning champion that is now in eighth place and definitely struggling. Um, actually, they're in 11th place. Someone lied to me. Um, anyways, so now that that's the fact, like, you mentioned these players that have been brought in, and they mm -hmm. need to step up. Yes, those are national team players. Those are team players with a lot of experience. But who on the remaining roster could have taken over that potential spot as a leader on this team? I mean, there's so many players that are on this Gotham side that are leaders. For me, it's, that's not really the question. For me, it's more so how do you adapt your game that's not what you did last year, but is, mm -hmm. fits the personnel that you acquired this year. Yes, you've lost Ali Krieger. You're still playing a high line last year. He still got exposed a lot last year for playing a high line. Now teams have adapted and seen that and said, oh, you're still going to do that. Bet. Well, we'll just go over the top. We'll go around you. We'll have our fastest players up there, and we'll try to punish you for it. I think it's more so of how can we now adapt with what we have. We don't have the fastest back line by any means. If we're sending Nicewanger really high as sort of a mock midfielder wing back, the coach – Juan Carlos Amorovs, I think, needs to make those adjustments, which I'm sure he has. They're still trying new things. They're still trying players in different positions. Figuring out that midfield piece, I think, is a big part of it. But I think it's more so a matter of how do they get everybody gelling in a way that makes sense where tactically they can be efficient because they have the talent. And that is not the question. And I think they have leadership, although why isn't Crystal Dunn starting? I'll say it again. <laughs> well, they have the leadership, but it's just it's not fully – meshing at the and right time. It's a new yet. team. There are so many yeah. new players. You can't expect things to be copy and paste from last year when you have so much turnover and not just in personnel, but in who makes up your roster, right? Yeah. It's a different style. And you're exactly right. The high line, people have caught on to it. They, mm -hmm. they have to change and adjust to what these individual players can bring out the best in them and where on the pitch that is because it's a new team and it is really tough to win back to back championships. I agree with you, Lisa, that yes, there's going to be a, a time to gel and there's going to be an adjustment period. But when we talked about the different players that Gotham was bringing in, it seemed like a lot of heavy hitters. It seemed like a lot of big personalities, a lot of players that needed more um, than maybe the everyday player, the, the water carrier, shall we say. And when you have too many of those very, very star players, do you start to see a little bit of friction, potentially, Darian? My opinion, they... The players that they let go of or traded away, that was a lot of heart on the team that maybe they're not the flashiest players or that have the biggest name, but still players that were willing to grind for the team. And not saying players that are on the roster now aren't, but Gotham was always the underdog. Mm -hmm. When they were Sky Blue, they were always mm -hmm. the underdog. They were not ever a favorite. They were always bottom of the table. So the fact that they had those same players committed to the process and they won a championship and then they lost a lot of that, it's going to take a, long, a bit of time to rebuild that sort of underdog tenacity that I think led them all the way they to the They can't have that same mindset, year. though. They're, they're no longer underdogs, and that's uh, where there's a change in yeah. how Gotham needs I think to that's play. The chemistry exactly, match exactly. We're exactly. You're, they're no longer the underdogs. They won the championship. They're stacked with U.S. internationals on their roster. They have to find a new character and identity that the, they want to try to take over this year because the blue collar underdog isn't them anymore. Oh, my God. Great conversation. And I love this conversation, but I just want to get to Seattle Rain real quickly because one of the things we haven't talked about is how much of an offseason could they really have had, Lisa? Because they were in this change of ownership mm -hmm. moment. It's hard. And when we talk about how how much they've kind of fallen off it's important to say that it was hard to make those signings when you don't know who your owner is exactly it's really hard to make contracts and and put money out there and promise things to players when you're going through an ownership change and a sale of your club and that's exactly what we saw from seattle um, hopefully over the next couple of months and the next international window they can pick up players and start to climb back up the table beautiful what do you think I totally agree. It's just <laughs> going to take some time. I think they'll get more players, and I have full trust in Laura Harvey that she's going to put everything in place for them to be back to where they were. This team has an identity. It's just getting the chemistry right to then get back to that.